Hello, Hello and, and welcome, welcome to our program on stock and soup. We are going to start with stocks. After the basic things we show you with eggs last week, this may seem a bit dull. But if you are serious about cooking, knowing how to make a good stock is essential. Even if you don't rely on the stock cube you can buy in supermarket, which I know are immediately noticeable in food, and you are actually making your own stock, this program could be very useful to you. Unless, of course, you are one of those perfect human being that has never used your stock pot as a dumping ground. Tell me, Albert, have you ever taken any dreadful shortcut? And how is the cooks behave at the garage? Are, are they very disciplined on my, to, my, my, how to make their stock? My dear chap, I'm, I'm very surprised that you mention the word shortcut. I don't know what it means. The stock pot at the garage is one person who is in charge. It is not a dumping ground. So again, line. very classical on that. Very, very classical. Well, I'm pleased to hear that. Seems I gently. Just wanted, I just wanted to quickly check if you were doing your job properly. I haven't changed. Well done. Uh, let's have a look at what we've got there on, the, on, on, on those lovely stock. We've got a little game stock which have been made. Look very rich. Very rich and deep, mm. dark color. Yep. We've got a very light lamb stock which is almost I mean, watery, very, very light lamb stock. And the most important of all, the basic one, that's the veal stock. Now, the veal stock, it's hard, it, very important to point out that can be reduced. It takes 24 hours to cook. It could be cooked very slowly. Well, yes, uh, it does take 24 hours to cook. And then you can uh, get a lovely double glass yes. out of it. Well, yes. it's reduced. It needs yes. to be reduced. And then you've got, that's for very rich yeah. sauce. Uh, I it tastes, you roast your bones and uh, you cook it. Can uh, we have a look at them on the same yes, time? That's yes. the bones, Billy, at their first stage when they're raw. They must mm. be beautifully fresh. And then we roasted them. That's right, and we with your vegetables. With the vegetables. I it, myself put always a veal trotter into it, Michel. I think it's nice. It gives give it the gelatin. Uh, the glutinous. Yeah, the glutinous. Yes, and the chine. And do you use fresh tomatoes or puree tomatoes? I use tomato puree, but I fry mine in the bones yeah. to take the edge, the edge of yes, the bitterness a bit out of, of it. Into the acidity. That's right. And of course, you've got the famous bouquet garni and the little yep. garlic glove with the onions mixed together. And the again. white wine, yeah. a little drop of white wine. Uh, stock. I mean, what do you say that, what is your worst experience which you've seen? I've got some experience which I personally like, people using flour in stock, which is totally wrong. Yes. I mean, you should not use flour in yes. stock. Uh, I've seen onions burned, so it goes... Bitterness, uh, it, very, it very bitterness bitter. of stock. Okay. It's bad news, yes. really. Too uh, much, too much of celery, too much of condiment. Yeah. So you don't get the marriage. There which is another what, power that's what it should be. Things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So that's totally wrong. Yes. Yes. Any other thing which you should point out and mention? Uh, no, so? Michel. A, a stock takes a good brown stock will take 24 hours. We cook as for 48 hours. Mm. Uh, but 24 is, hours is the minimum. It's the minimum. It's yes. a slow process, so that and we there eat should and be eat. no cooking without stock, really. Well, you can't cook without stock. We're talking stock. about serious cooking. Uh, yeah, 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 serious we'll cooking. We'll do exactly the same. We've got yeah. all our range of stock. I mean, you can use yes. cube, but as you know, we can always pick it up straight away when there's yes, a cube. Yes, and you see, they can force beautifully well, so you don't have yes. really to do it too often. Your no, stock. no, uh, once a month, twice yeah. a month. Exactly. Yep. So. What is the next thing? Well, now? the next thing, Michel, I think you... Are you going to uh, do some work? No, well, I'm going, I'm going out because you're going to do something which is a quick version of a white chicken stock, shortcut again. As you know, <laughs> okay. I do not take shortcut. <laughs> so rather than see it and yeah. suffering, I'm going to leave it to you. Well, in fact, I'll, I feel very happy to do what you call shortcut. Yes, yeah, I'm going to bid my goodbye <laughs> to you. Good. Uh, chicken stock. Now, in this recipe, I'm making the stock from chicken. But a note of warning. Do not think that you will make a better stock by steaming at pressure for more than 20 minutes. After this time, pressure cooking is struck too much from the bean boards, and the stock can be cloudy and lose some of its delicacy. Now, let's have a look at the ingredient. The basic ingredient, of course, the chicken. You've got necks, wings, a little carcass, all the bones which have been finely chopped. Nice and fresh. Most important. Licks, which have been cut. Again, little pieces of carrots, which have been chopped. Mushroom, onions, which have been sad with cloves. And a little bikigani. Now, the first thing to do, you place your pressure cooker on the hobs and add your butter, a little piece of butter. You then steam very gently. You sweat exactly your vegetable for 10 minutes. No more than 10 minutes. So that all goes there. The bouquet garni will go last. Now, 
you cover it, and then you leave it on for 10 minutes. So after the 10 minutes have gone, you place your chicken bones into the pressure cooker, and then you cover it up with water. I'm calling, I'm saying covering it up, very important, just up to the bones. So they nicely cover. Then I've got one which I've been just boiling now. So what you do, the bouquet garni is in by now, of course. You just skim the top, as it's got to be skimmed a little. So you take some of the fat away and skim, as there is a little fat. You don't want a cloudy stock. There we are. And then you place <coughs> your lids. You can see that it's beautifully, just nicely boiling now. You place your lid inside the quicker pressure. Close it nicely, and that's ready. Now, when it's boiling, when the pressure is on, it needs no more than 20 minutes, as I was saying early on, most important of all. And then you've got a lovely chicken stock. Now, let's have a look at the chicken stock. I've just got one there, which has been, in fact, not only cooked, but drained. So here we've got the chicken stock, which has been drained. You can see all what's left of the chicken, carrots, onions, and bukigani. And here is that lovely chicken stock. You look at it, it's not cladded. It's clear. That's what we want. We want a light, clear color. So a quick white chicken stock is very straightforward. Well, yes, except for one crucial ingredient, the bukegani. In fact, in our bukegani, we always use this combination of herbs. Parsley stock, leeks, celery, thyme, bay leaf, all wrapped in string. But like stock, bukegani can become rather dumping ground with very inappropriate herbs mixed together. Before I pull apart some commercial bukegani and see what is on offer, I would like to take you on a little trip around my herbs garden, which is my pride and joy. Salut, Pierrot. Oh, bonjour, monsieur. Comment va le jardin? Oh, très bien, merci. What a lovely cherry leaf out there. We're going to use a lot in the next few days. Now, this is Pierrot. Pierrot is my gardener, wonderful guy. He looks after the herbs, and herbs are so important in the restaurant business, That's especially for me at the water side. Now, let's remember one thing, however. He's got one drawback. His English is worse than mine. Uh, having said that, let's have a look at the cherry. What a lovely cherry we've got there, Pio. I mean, uh, fantastic. Now, uh, don't cut too much at a time. I really would like to use it as a garnish on the top. Yeah. Eh? On, you know, not in the sauce. It's a lovely garnish. Mm. And we'll use it as well, and we will use it in the seri with the little turbot and the salmon. Okay. Now let's have a look at all your goodies. Take me around. Look at that, Pio. You see, this year, for the first time, we've got the lemon thyme. And we're going to use it. I'm doing a, a nice massless dishes in the series, in the TV series. Dish which we do at the water side as a starter. Yes. Beautiful. We use thyme. And we use, obviously, thyme in a lot of bukegani from time to time. Particularly every bukegani do have thyme. Uh, you see those beautiful flies? Yes, yes. We will use them on the little tiger with bees. Use with the chop, the little uh, Côte d'Agneau, awesome. the little lamb chop, yes. on presentation. So don't cut, don't snip the flies. Keep me an eyes on the mint as well. Okay. And let's have a look at what's happened next. Oh, well, you've got nice little salad there. Oh, you've cut some of it. Yes. You've cut some yes. of the yes. roquette. Yes. What I like about the roquette, it's that lovely, lovely little spicy flavor, peppery flavor. Yes. which is unusual, unknown, uh, normally. I mean, you, you get that kind of salad normally inside of France. It's better than last year. Have you put anything there? I use a passion composta. Ah, you use composta? Yep. Yeah, that's going to be costly, but my salad is nice, so I don't care. <laughs> so use composta, that's a jolly good idea. And it looks lovely in salad, just a few leaves of rocket. Beautiful.